So I hope your mouth is still watering because it's time to digest that patty within the uh, Zynga burger. So we are still talking about the digestive system and now we are at the duodenum. This section has been further divided into the mesoduodenum which is the mesentery of the duodenum. We will see how that develops. Then we will talk about the formation of the lesser sac. We will see how the rotation of stomach results in the formation of an opening within the, uh, this uh, omentum and this is known as the lesser sac. And then we will see how the omentum and the, how the peritoneum of the duodenum which was initially covering it in, in its entirety uh, becomes obliterated or absorbed and how this duodenum forms the for uh, goes in a retro uh, peritoneal aspect so moving on developmentally duodenum has been divided into two parts the part uh, the upper one the upper half of the duodenum is derived from the foregut and the lower half of the duodenum is derived from the hindgut. However, duodenum is a C-shaped structure which is actually divided into four adult parts. The first part is the upper, um, upper leg of the C, the second part is where the common bile duct opens, the third part is the part distal to the common bile duct and fourth part is the terminal part. So developmentally, as I talked about before, the proximal half of the duodenum is de um, <laughs> developed from the foregut and the distal half of the duodenum is developed from the midgut. So this would be the proximal half in purple and this would be the uh, distal half in brown to orange. Th this proximal part is developed from uh, the foregut and the distal part is developed from the midgut. Now, this is the first part of the duodenum, the um, upper segment of the sea, the upper leg of the sea. This is the second part till the opening of the common bile duct after the uh, distal to the opening of the common bile duct is the third part of the duodenum and finally we have the distal part which is known as the fourth part of the duodenum. These are the functional parts, those were the developmental parts. So now we'll talk about the mesoduodenum. Mesoduodenum is the mesentery of the duodenum. So it devel uh, the developing duodenum, it forms a loop that is attached to the posterior abdominal wall. So this is the posterior abdominal wall. This is the mesoduodenum and it is attached to the duodenum from the posterior abdominal wall. Now, it is present in a sagittal plane initially. So this is the sagittal plane. It is initially present within the sagittal plane. Its apex, apex is the highest point of a thing. So apex, its apex is at the junction of the foregut and the midgut. So here, this is the junction of the foregut and the midgut. And this is the highest point at which um, this mesoduodenum is attached. So there's clockwise rotation to the left which makes the duodenum uh, loops fall to the right or on the right side. So we talked about this before. There's a longitudinal rotation and the AP rate rotation or these rotations are clockwise as a result of which the stomach comes to lie to the left side and the duodenum comes to lie on the right side. So the mesentery is absorbed. This mesentery was initially in uh, covering this uh, duodenum, the sections of the duodenum is now absorbed and now it becomes retroperitoneal. So we talked about four basic things within this uh, slide. In this we talked about how the mesentery develops from the posterior abdominal wall. The highest point is the anterior intestinal portal that is the junction between the stomach and uh, between the foregut and the duodenum. After that there is clockwise rotation of the stomach which causes the stomach to lie on the left side and the duodenum to lie on the right side. Now the mesentery of the duodenum is reabsorbed and the duodenum becomes a retroperitoneal structure. So now we'll see what actually is happening and how the development takes place. Referring to the figure, this is the developing aorta, this is the aorta, this is the developing spleen. Since this is the spleen, um, so this is the stomach and this is the dorsal mesogastrium. This is the dorsal mesogastrium, this is the dorsal part of the dorsal mesogastrium, this is the ventral part of the dorsal mesogastrium. Now this is the developing liver. Now this is the ventral part of the ventral mesogastrium, now this is the dorsal part of the ventral mesogastrium and this is again is the spleen. 
Now, these arrows signify the development and how the adult positions are achieved. The so stomach is now tending to move towards the right. Now, the liver is expanding rapidly. It moves to uh, the liver moves towards the right. The stomach moves towards the left. The spleen is now developing at an exponential rate. It derives its blood supply from the aorta. This is the blood supply that is uh, uh, being derived from the aorta. Now the stomach undergoes rotation. The rotation of the stomach causes pulling of the ventral and the dorsal mesogastrium in such a fashion that the opening of the lysis they becomes an opening within the omentum. Now this opening of the omentum comes to lie behind the lysis sac. This, uh, this is the stomach. And this is the opening of the lesser sac, which comes to lie behind the stomach. And this is where the, um, uh, the opening in the lesser omentum is formed, uh, which is also known as the epiploic foramen. So the spleen has attained its adult position. The liver has attained it, its adult position. This is the lesser omentum. This is the falciform ligament. This is the parietal peritoneum covering the entirety of it, the gastrosplanic ligament, the spleen, this is the splenic artery which is derived directly from the abdominal aorta and this is the linear renal ligament. So what happens, uh, re recapping this slide, we have uh, the formation of lesser sac. The important things in the formation of lesser sac are the adult, at the attainment of adult position, positions of stomach spleen and liver so the stomach tends to uh, undergo clockwise rotation as a result of which it tends to lie to the right side the uh, to the left side the, uh, the liver is expanding very rapidly and it uh, almost occupies the right side the spleen develops and it attains its it also develops its blood supply from the developing abdominal aorta in this way the opening of the lesser sac comes to lie behind the stomach this opening is also known as the epiploic foramen so now we'll see how the momentum of the duodenum is reabsorbed and the duodenum becomes retroperitoneal before getting into the detail please look at the figure this is the posterior abdominal wall in the dark blue then we have the uh, peritoneum of the posterior abdominal wall. This layer is the peritoneum of the posterior abdominal wall. Then this is the mesentery of the duodenum which was extending from the posterior abdominal wall. And this is the duodenum. So now we'll see what happens. So the duodenum and the head of pancreas are pressed against the dorsal body wall. Why is that? That is because of the rotation that is going through within the abdominal cavity. There's a rapid exp <coughs> expansion of the liver. There's clockwise rotation of the stomach and there's formation of the spleen as a result of which the duodenum along with the head of pancreas is pushed towards the dorsal body wall. As a result of which the right surface of the dorsal mesoduodenum, so this is the right surface of the dorsal mesoduodenum, it fuses with the adjacent peritoneum. So these blue lines, they represent the fusion of the right surface of the dorsal, um, dorsal mesoduodenum, which is fusing with the peritoneum. We talked about this, this is the mesoduodenum, this is the right part and this is the um, peritoneum both of these are now fusing as a result both of these layers now disappear since they are vestigial they are not required anymore so both of these layers now disappear when these layers both of them disappear so the uh, duodenum also only has peritoneum on its front side and hence the duodenum becomes retroperitoneal that it lies behind the peritoneum so the duodenum in the head of <coughs> pancreas now become fixed in a retroperitoneal position. Now you can see they are being fixed in the retroperitoneal position and peritoneum only covers um, the duodenum and the head of pancreas anteriorly. So the dorsal mesoduodenum disappears in its entirety. So this segment, the dorsal mesoduodenum, it disappears almost completely except in the region of pylorus of the stomach. So the only region that retains the dorsal mesoduodenum is the uh, region of the pylorus of the stomach. So what happened in this slide? We talked about the retroperitonealization uh, of the duodenum. 
we saw how the uh, mesentery of the duodenum it originated from the posterior abdominal wall however due to rapid expansion of liver the rotation of the stomach and development of the spleen the uh, duodenum along with the head of pancreas are pushed towards the dorsal abdominal wall as a result of which the right dorsal mesoduodenum it fuses with the uh, peritoneum of the posterior abdominal wall and both of these layers disappear as a result of which the duodenum comes to lie retroperitoneally and the only section that retains the dorsal meso um, the mesoduodenum is the pylorus of the stomach now moving on so during the second month of development the duodenum becomes recanalized so initially the lumen of the duodenum is obliterated by the rapidly proliferating cells so, however with the passage of time these uh, pro proliferating cells now undergo destruction and they are, they recanalize the lumen of the duodenum so that it, its patency can be um, maintained and the, for the further development of the elementary canal However, if this patency does not take place or however, if a section of the duodenum does not, uh, is not recanalized, we can have duodenal atresia. So what is atresia? Atresia means tightening of a spot since it's duodenal atresia. Duodenal atresia means tightening of the duodenum. So here in the figure you can see this is the pyloric end of the stomach. Now this is the duodenum, the first part of the duodenum the second part of the duodenum now this is somewhat the third part of the duodenum and in here we can see there's tightening of the duodenum duodenal lumen that is duodenal atresia so it occurs due to the failure of recanalization of the duodenum as i've talked about it earlier uh, it occurs just distal to the opening of the hepaticopancreatic ampulla most commonly it occurs there it occasionally, occasionally involves the third part of the duodenum. It may involve the third part. Sometimes clinically in infants with duodenal atresia, vomiting begins just a few hours after birth. This vomitus contains bile. So the double bubble sign is seen in the X-ray abdomen and ultrasound, which is indicative of the duodenal atresia. It's uh, an, an important clinical finding which needs surgical correction as soon as the baby is delivered or as soon as you find out to, so that uh, the growth of the baby may not be impaired. So in this section we talked about the development of duodenum. We saw how the adult duodenum was formed. What were the two embryological origins that were used? in its formation. Then we talked about the mesoduodenum, how it developed, how it engulfed the, um, the duodenum and finally how the duodenum became a retroperitoneal structure. Then we saw how the recanalization of duodenum took place and what happened if there, were def there was a defective recanalization which uh, led to duodenal atresia. We saw what a double bubble sign was and what was its importance. I hope you enjoyed it. Keep watching Scardia.com.